Good evening. Um, thank you for having me this evening. I would like to share with you our 2022-2023 PSSA assessment and keystone exam results. Uh, just as a reminder, sorry. The PSSA is given in English language arts and math in grades three through eight, and the science assessment is given in grades four through eight. Um, we'll get to the keystone exams, but those are end of year exams in literature, algebra one, and um, biology. Sorry, I'll give everybody a minute to leave there. So on the slides here tonight, you'll see that we have district data summary for English language arts by grade, math by grade, science by grade, and that'll have additional information on cohort data, which is the students that are in that same grade level across the years, so with third grade through eighth grade. Um, I'll also share with you some information on the Future Ready Index and some action plans. Um, so I won't do the read aloud here, but this is just a reminder of what exactly the PSSA assessments are, as well as the keystones I kind of summarized as I began. And I want us to take a first look at the third grade trends. So as an understanding of what this slide shows, the data shows from 2018 through 2023, the ELA scores are on the left of the lighter blue, and the math scores are on the right. Uh, and just taking a look at this information, we can see that obviously we don't have that data point from 2020 as a reminder with the COVID year, but we can take a look at that. And ELA has maintained relative proficiency across before COVID and now after COVID. Um, and grade three math remains essentially the same. The next slide shows the grade four trends. Again, in fourth grade, they take the ELA exam, the math exam, and the science exam. So on the leftmost columns is the ELA data. And you can see that the trend here kind of has been pretty well established for ELA, um, some ups and downs across the year, um, but really relatively stable. For the math, you can see the same type of thing, except for that year in the middle there was 2021 after COVID. And then the science data, again, remains relatively strong compared to the other areas. This slide shows a lot of that same information, just broken down in a different way. Um, again, over the years of 2021, 2022, 2023, these are the subject areas, grade levels, and the advanced and proficient for each of those. The additional data point I was able to add this year from Lincoln was the Montgomery County percent of proficient and advanced. I know that's something that we had talked about in the past where that ranking may fall. Uh, so you can see here, for example, the third grade ELA 2023 scores for spring forward, 76% advanced and proficient. Montgomery County, that was 65%. The state average is 54. So the far right column is the difference between spring forward and the state average. So I'll give you a minute to take a look at that. The next slide shows the breakdown from the below basic, basic, proficient, and advanced. Um, as a reminder, we really are looking for that score of proficient or advanced for all students. Uh, so we do have some areas of students that we really want to make sure that we're moving towards that proficiency. The next slide shows the grade five trends. Again, set up the same way with ELA on the left, math on the right. Uh, the ELA scores have essentially remained unchanged over the course of the uh, period of time that is represented here. One of the things that we are looking at is looking at that math score. We are looking for improvements in math. We have talked about this in the past and we're doing a lot of work and I'll explain some of the work that we're doing at the end of the presentation. But I do want you to note that basically those math scores were very low in 2021 and we've rebounded to the pre-COVID time period um, with the 2023 scores. Grade six is the next slide, similar setup. We have the math, uh, ELA on the left, math on the right. Again, very similar to the sixth grade trends, ELA remains relatively stable. The math scores did dip down in 2021 and they've rebounded to where we were before COVID. This is the same breakdown as that previous slide for third and fourth grade, just again shown a little bit differently. This has the information from 21, 22, 23, 
again with the Montgomery County average of proficient and advanced, the state average, and that far, the green block, um, are all the differences from the state averages. This slide shows the breakdown again of the basic, uh, below basic, basic, proficient, and advanced scores. And the next section is the same situation for seventh grade. In seventh grade, they take the ELA and math just like in sixth grade and fifth grade. Um, looking at this again from 2018 to 2023, the ELA scores again remain relatively high and stable across the time period, and the math again has rebounded from the low in 2021. This slide again breaks down the information from 2021, 2022, 2023, and again against the state and the county. The next slide is the grade eight trends. Um, so again, this is the, in eighth grade, they take ELA, math, and science. And one of the areas that we have talked about in the past, and again, um, this year, we can see that our math scores in eighth grade are an area of, that we want in additional improvement. Um, the ELA scores have remained relatively stable with some ups and downs across the year, and the science is much stronger even than it was um, even before COVID. It, it has um, been strengthened over the time. This is the same slide as previous with the eighth grade scores in it. So looking at it again across those three years with the average from Montgomery County, the state average, and then the state comparison to spring forward. And just take a look at where we are right now for math because when I get to the future slides, looking at our um, proficient and advances 44% for spring forward, Montgomery County is 38 and the state average is 26, but there's still areas that we wanna work on. This is a breakdown here again for seventh and eighth grade for the proficiency levels. The next slide uh, actually gets into the Keystone exam, so that's what that, I skipped over it, it went a little too fast for me, so I apologize for that. Um, taking a look here, these are the exa uh, Keystone exam results for literature. Again, the, this year it was 70.7%. Montgomery County was at 58%. The state average was 653 And looking at the Algebra 1, I will add an additional data point here, looking at the 2023 um, our spring forward was 66.8. That was the um, average between the high school scores and the middle school scores. For our middle school, our proficiency in advance was 94.4%, and the high school was at 52.7%. So I just wanted to show you again um, by comparison to the county since we have that as a breakdown for us now as well. And then looking at the biology scores, again, much stronger than the state and county. This is the information for that breakdown for the spring uh, administration as well for literature, algebra one, and biology. I do wanna highlight that we have many students achieving the advanced level in the biology exam, and if you've taken biology, you know that it is not an easy task to do. And the next section is the cohort data. So this is when we're looking at specific classes. So the, it'll be the 2027 class, which is the current ninth grade through the 2020, I'm sorry, the 2031, which is the current fifth graders. So I look at this a little bit differently than when we look at the proficiency on the previous slides, because these are the same students that we've had since the beginning. So with, if they're listed up here, that means we've had them from third grade, in this case, through eighth grade data. So it's the same students, we've had them throughout their career here. So looking at their th uh, third grade data through their eighth grade data, again, the ELA remains relatively stable, and the math is, a this is our current class of 2029, our current seventh graders, very similar story. They continue to strengthen both in ELA and in math. 
This is our current sixth grade, very similar story. There's a little bit of a dip there in the math, but overall it's a very, relatively uh, stable group. This is our class of 20, should be 2031. I have a typo there, so I apologize for that. Um, taking a look at that, this is the information again um, for our current fifth graders, and they are pretty similar scores across both of those bands for ELA and math. So the last part here, just looking at what we can do as a community and as a school district, there are areas that even someone mentioned earlier, the Future Ready Index, that is a public facing site. That information will have state assessment measures, on track measures, college and career readiness. And the information listed under those bullet points are the information that you can find on those sites in order to look at student achievement relative to whether it's Spring Forward or other surrounding districts. Um, that information will include proficiency for advanced uh, and advanced for PSSA, Keystone, for Math, Science, ELA, uh, as well as areas of demonstrating growth. Um, looking at the English language growth and attainment scores, regular attendance, some early indicators of success which begin in third grade for ELA and the early indicators of success in grade seven in looking at math. And there's some additional information looking at college and career benchmarking, graduation cohorts, industry-based uh, competencies, as well as post-secondary transition. I want to just remind the community and our board, just looking at this is one data snapshot, one couple days in time. Um, what we really focus in is our students and looking at this pillar, we, assessment is one component of that pillar. We also look at our curriculum, our instruction, our management, um, making sure that we're really focused on that student-focused learning. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that we're really proud of, uh, looking at our data with our teachers, with our administrators. The comprehensive plan is well underway. Um, we're working towards MTSS teams in place and being able to support our students with even more precise uh, needs. And then the learning loss plan continues to address student needs, making sure that we're looking through tutoring, summer programming, additional social, emotional, and mental health resources. And our students were high achieving uh, by comparison to other schools across the county and across the state. And our cohort data shows that we're really maintaining or growing in our English and language arts programs. Um, I just wanted to remind you of some of the things that we had pri prioritized with our comprehensive plan. I'm just gonna flip over because I have a few more notes here. So just taking a look, I had mentioned what we were focusing and working on. Um, under goal math, uh, the goal one number one for math, all buildings will meet or exceed the 2030 PSSA proficiency targets for math. Um, and what we're doing right now in our grades five through eight band and algebra one, these documents are being finalized as well as looking at product review so we can do additional resources for our teachers. This includes professional development and new resources for our students. And then the K4 re, um, curriculum review will occur next school year. Um, and then also looking at Math Goal 3, we talked a little bit before about this, but we have math intervention resources being utilized in grades five through seven for targeted math intervention. So these are all things that we've been either putting in place or are in place right now in order to support our math achievement. The other piece under intervention, we have teams that have been established and they're working on finalizing plans for additional systems of support. And then the intervention goal number two, all buildings have data teams that have been established. We had summer team training. Uh, there were also some fall sessions. Dr. Reinheimer actually led some this afternoon and additional sessions are scheduled later this late fall, early winter, and then into the winter with our elementary teams. And then under special education, we've continued with teacher training, updated resources, partnerships among IEP teams to continue to focus on the least restrictive environment. Some other things that you'll see on the agenda later as we get into the curriculum and programming are related to the Structured Literacy Grant. We have definitely new resources and some additional training that our teachers will be able to have that'll also strengthen and support special education as well as general education in the ELA area. I had said that. Going backwards, sorry about that. I have one last piece here. Um, this is for any community member, any teacher, any administrator. We have information linked here that you'll be able to access uh, the Keystone exam and PSSA information. 
that future ready glossary as well as where to find that future ready PA index. And there's this, a link there that takes you to family and teacher resources as well. I would like to take any questions if you have any for me. Thank you, Mrs. Gardy. I'll defer it over to Dr. Wright. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much to you for presenting this information to us and to your team, your admin team, the teachers that take the time to prepare our students for the PSSAs and the Keystones, and then also the families that really make a commitment to having their students show up for these tests prepared to do the best that they can on them too. Um, a couple of things, the resources that you just offered, how will people be able to access those? Usually Ms. Crew does post this on our website so that will be able to be linked. Perfect, thank you. Um, I know that um, people will, some people will look at this data and will break it apart and misinterpret some of it. And you had mentioned that this is just one data point when we're looking at assessment, that it's just a couple of days throughout the entire year. Um, but some will look at it and say that, you know, half our students are failing, like, you know, for example, half our eighth grade students are failing math. Can you please explain so, um, how that is not what this is measuring? That Thank you. I can go back to that slide too if that helps, but what that information actually does show, um, it does show a representation of where students were against those eighth grade standards in that given point in time. Um, so taking a look at, um, sorry, I probably should have gone back before. So taking a look, I think you're referring to where that 44%, is that what you're referring to? Um, that is a concern for us because we do believe our students are able to produce higher level scores on that. One of the things that we continue to look at though is looking at the growth of individual students. Uh, so one of the metrics is looking at, it's called PVAS, so we're able to look at what a student was able to do in say seventh grade and making sure that they're continuing to grow as an individual. Um, and then looking for supports, whether it's enrichment or remediation to support those students. So this isn't a great per se, like if you're thinking of a failing grade, this is a per percent of students that were considered proficient or advanced on this particular exam for those particular standards. Thank you very much for explaining that. And always knowing that um, the work is never finished. I liked that you talked about some of the interventions and some of the things that we are doing as a district in order to continue to grow. It is you know, no child left behind, that idea. We'd like to see everybody to be proficient or advance. And I know that the, the staff um, is always working to improve that. And you talked about the new math curriculum with that. Would, um, what, just one other thing, um, the MTSS, would you explain what that uh, is and for people who might not know that? Sorry. Uh, yes, so um, currently or in the past years we have been working under uh, RTII model, a response to intervention and instruction. Um, really moving to an MTSS model, it stands for multi-tiered systems of support, and that is really just looking at the whole child, making sure that we're looking at reading, looking at math, looking at social emotional supports, looking at the mental health c component, behavioral supports, um, making sure that the student gets all of the things that they need in order to be successful making sure that we're supporting families in ways that they may need that we haven't maybe have overlooked in the past, making sure that we're supporting, again, that whole child like you mentioned. Thank you very much. And other and, and like I said, I know that we're always working to improve, but it was so nice to see the growth that we have made since um, last year. So thank you to your team. So. I would just like to add to that too. It's really nice to see that before we step out that things are starting to you know, regroup and, and, and get back to where Springford is, is a leader. And, you know, I think, as we know, everybody took the hit, and it, we saw the graphs and the charts that pointed that out, but it's still nice to see those numbers rebounding, and it's because of all the work that you guys do every day to bring that back, so thank you for doing that. You're welcome, thank you. 